A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. And it was a good morning. There was no snow at my house this morning. I think there might have been snow at your house. I saw your car drift. <laughs> what a weekend. Friday. All Hallows Eve. Where the neighborhood children tried to come and relieve us about the candy. <laughs> Saturday, yesterday, All Saints Day. And today, we gather to celebrate All Souls Day. In the American Southwest, and in Central and South America, and in Spain, and other places in the world, they celebrate the Day of the Dead, except that it's actually a three-day holiday. Go figure. People party, they clean and decorate cemeteries, and they spend time in prayer. They pray for their ancestors and the loved ones that have passed away or died. It's something that we need to think about and pray about. All souls, past, those who have gone before us, and future, our souls. We don't like to think of such things as our finite future, the finiteness of our life, and the fact that none of us is going to get out of here alive. Many of us can think about it long enough to buy life insurance and prepare a will. But then we put it out of our minds. And in the words of an old rock and roll song, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. With the exception of the late Father Austin, I think that's true. No one else I've ever known wanted to die. And yet, that's the culmination of the promise, the best part of the good news. God loves us, forgives our sins, and has a place for us. And so, why don't we look forward to death and its rewards? I believe it's because we're afraid. Despite our coming to church and hearing God's word, beginning with Hebrew scriptures and culminating with the Gospels, Despite the constant reassurance of God's love and deliverance given throughout the Bible, we're still not sure, and we're afraid. We seem to be a people who love fear. And Jesus tells us time and again, do not be afraid. I read an interesting article in the Times this week. It seems that Chapman University did a, stir, a survey and a study about American fears. It's not pretty. We seem to be afraid of everything. And we don't prepare for anything either. We, that is, Americans in general, we fear crime. The survey indicated that more than 50% of Americans believe that child abductions and gang violence and human trafficking and school shooting and sexual assaults have increased dramatically in the last 20 years. But statistics show that that's not true. In fact, violent crime in the United States has fallen by almost half between 1993 and 2012, according to the FBI crime report. 
America is actually significantly safer today than it was 20 years ago. And yet, we're afraid. We're afraid of natural disasters. I couldn't find whether or not there are more or less of them than there were 20 years ago, but Americans are, by the survey, afraid of floods and severe storms and power outages and earthquakes and pandemics. Any both. <laughs> Those surveyed who expressed moderate to extreme fear were asked if they had an emergency preparation kit Almost 72% of those surveyed did not. We have personal fears, including fears for our own personal safety, fears about our future, about criminal victimization, etc. We have fears about our government and governmental policy, including corruption and pollution and even the Affordable Care Act. The survey shows we're afraid of asteroid strikes and volcanoes and terrorists and nuclear accidents. In short, we're afraid of almost everything. The Chapman survey didn't ask if we were afraid of dying, but I'm guessing from all of these other things that that's not a problem. We certainly are. So my question today is, why? Why are we so afraid? Now, the survey had some insights on this. They looked at other things among about age and gender and race and work status and education, political preferences, religion, television watching, among other things. And many things about this survey were not really surprising. People with a high school education or less have higher degrees of fear about more, quantity, more things. Watching television talk shows is related to fear. The survey shows a very simple straight line effect between television talk shows and fear. The more television talk shows are watched, the more, fe the more fearful one tends to be. Now, they're not clear whether fearful people turn television talk shows or whether television talk shows make people fearful, but the correlation is pretty clear. TV programming, not necessarily talk shows, but related and devoted to crime and criminals, also indicate higher levels of fear of the future, the internet, criminal victimizations, youth, phobias, natural and man-made disasters. You can look up this study online if you like. It's at the Chapman University website. You'll find that Women have fears that are different from men. Those who practice a religion have fears different than those who don't. Republicans have fears that are different than Democrats. I'm an independent, I'm afraid of both. But really, really, what do we have to fear? As Catholic Christians, I think the question comes down to, do we really trust God? Our wisdom reading this morning says, the souls of the just are in the hands of God. No torment shall touch them. It says, those who trust in God shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. So, can overcoming our fears be as simple as just living a just life and trusting God. In John's Gospel today, Jesus tells us, I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life. Can overcoming our fears be as simple as coming to Jesus and believing in him? We gather today to pray in commemoration of all the faithful departed. But all souls means also praying and thinking of our own future reward and our faith, and our faith without fear. Jesus tells us, do not be afraid, for I am with you always, even to the end of time. 
So if you find you're struggling with your fears, I have a suggestion for this coming week. Why not turn off the TV and pick up a book to further your education? And if you're looking for a recommendation, this is a good book. 